Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith again, and uh, this is Shackleton. So I'm showing a lot of uh, graphs that uh, James Hansen and his team has produced, um, which cover many, many aspects of climate change. So I can give you sort of an update um, with this video, the last one, and probably the next few on uh, sort of the state of the climate. Now it's extremely warm here. I've got a fan in the background, but I managed to pick up this uh, hand-powered uh, popsicle stick fan. So, uh, you know, I find it very, very useful to uh, keep cool. So if you hear this noise every so often, it's, uh, you know, it was the only design that they had at the uh, hardware store. And, you know, it's good for the cat. It, whoa, he doesn't like it. Okay. Yeah, cats don't like uh, air into their face. So, Okay, so I'm going to just continue on with the uh, James Hansen uh, generated plots. So in the last video, I showed this. Uh, this is the global surface temperature relative to the 1880 to 1920 mean. And uh, we had super El Ninos in 1996 and in 2015, 2016, giving these spikes. And uh, we're, we're not in an El Nino and we're getting, you know, it looks like we're, we're, we're spiking up again. Um, the trend is 0 0.18 degrees Celsius increase per decade. That's the best linear fit from 1970 to 2020. And you could, argue, you know, looking at the eyeballing this data, if you fit a linear curve to the last 10 years, it's going to have a slope of much larger than 0 0.18. So we'll see if this trend uh, continues. Now, there's lots of other figures here. So this is, um, these are the, this is the global temperature plot. Um, again, here, there's some volcanoes here and here and here, which cause dips. Um, if you break this curve down into land surface temperatures and sea surface temperatures, you get a divergence, of course. Um, so this is uh, reaching about one degree. So from the previous um, video, this would basically be relative to the 1950 to 1981 uh, baseline of a degree, right? If it's relative to the 1880 to 1920 baseline, it's, it hits 1.2. But uh, so it's, a, you know, be careful of what baseline is being used. So if, if it's so relative to the 1950 to 81 baseline, it's one degree. Now that's about 1.5 degree over the land surfaces and about, uh, you know, 0 0.7 or so over the oceans. And when you combine over the entire planet, that you get the uh, sort of the, the one. It's not quite the average between these because the ocean comprises, you know, about 70% of the surface, land only about 30%. Okay, uh, this is the El Nino. Uh, this is the, this region here, the water temperature. Um, so it's, you know, positive, you've got the El Ninos, negative, you have the, the La Ninas. This is a very strong El Nino um, in, in uh, the, this is the uh, 1996 strong, powerful El Nino, and there's been others, and this one here is the 2015-2016 one. Um, okay, and uh, if you look at the um, January to June surface temperature relative to 1951 to 1980 mean, um, here we are in 2020, it's the second warmest. This area here is extremely warm. It's been extremely warm, warm um, so far this year, January to June. Um, and the warmest was actually 2016, while there was a strong El Nino going on here. Uh, 1.13 degrees Celsius is the global average above this mean, 1.12. So it only beat it out slightly. And then the fifth warmest was in 2015. The third warmest was in 2017. Um, fourth warmest in 2019. Fifth warmest tied uh, in 2018, tied with uh, 2015. So all recent years, 
And you can see the distribution, huge warming in the Arctic, some warming in Antarctica in general, but you know, it's the Northern Hemisphere that's on fire, essentially. This is the monthly mean global land ocean temperature index, if you like. So the months are here, January to December, and you can see the, um, the warming that is occurring here. Um, okay, this is in degrees Celsius. So, you know, over 1.2, between 1.2 and 1.38 degrees Celsius warmer in a couple months, February and March of 2016, during the, that strong El Nino, um, February of this year. And you can see, you know, between 1 and 1.2 is the black region. So, you know, as, as we, uh, you know, if you follow the trend here, it's pretty clear, you know, we're into, you know, very extreme warming. And this is the changes in, uh, this is the global changes in throughout season. So the winter in the Northern Hemisphere is December, January, February. Then we have the spring, March, April, May, summer, June, July, August, and autumn, September, October, November. And these are the years here, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. And you can see the, uh, you know, the temperatures are down here and you can see the tremendous warming. So this is June only in 2020. This is, um, okay, so June only, not June, July, August. And this is March, April, May, huge warming in Siberia, December, January, February, huge warming in Siberia once again. So these are off the charts here this year, you know, very harmful for the permafrost. You know, we'll get lots more uh, methane and CO2 coming up from the permafrost. And right now it's doing a number on the sea ice. The ice is pretty much gone in this region here, off the Siberian, um, off, off Asia in the Arctic Ocean and the heat dome has moved essentially now right over to the center of the, of the North Pole region and we're getting tremendous uh, melting, record setting melting at the moment. So you can look at the, uh, you know, these are well worth uh, looking at to see the overall uh, trends of where the regions that are heating up the most. And these numbers here, this is the global average uh, temperature relative to that base period. Okay, um, this is uh, 2019 relative to the baseline 1951 to 1980. So winter, spring, summer, and autumn. You can see most of the warming is in the winter and in the spring and, and in the autumn. Okay, so looks like the spring is the warmest up here um, in the Arctic. There's more of this brown, which is three to five degrees Celsius. Slightly less, um, slightly lower anomalies in the winter, um, in the autumn, and then the spring, the summer is where the warming is more distributed over the whole planet, not so much in the, in the Arctic. This is the change from uh, 2019 relative to 1950, just the one year as opposed to the average. And then the uh, standard deviation from, from this number here, um, you can see the warming is just, you know, out of control in the, in the Arctic. Um, and uh, here's some more, this is, this is uh, some more plots showing uh, the change from 2000 to 2019 um, in each of these months in each of these seasons throughout the year. Uh, again, uh, you know, lots of warming in the winter, uh, also in the spring, not so much in the summer. You know, the summer is the, uh, the, the Arctic temperature amplification is greatest in the three seasons, in the winter season, in the spring, and in the autumn, not so much in the summer. Okay, um, and there's all kinds of different analysis, all kinds of maps here that you can look at to get your decadal anomalies and uh, you know loads and loads of uh, loads and loads of data. Um, this shows the zonal land ocean temperature change, so we can see the warming in the Arctic uh, versus the uh, northern mid latitudes versus the tropics 
versus the southern mid-latitudes and Antarctica. So it's broken down into all of these different zonal regions and you can see you know, the tremendous uh, Arctic warming compared to the global average and compared to the warming in all of these other regions. And you'll notice, so, so, so you'll notice the tropics is here in the middle, the red curve, Antarctica is, is the lowest and the southern hemisphere, mostly ocean, is, is also second lowest. It, you can, can look at the Arctic versus the Antarctic. Um, you can look at the northern mid-latitudes versus the southern mid-latitudes. Again, land masses in the north, Arctic temperature amplification pulling this up. And you can look at the tropics here. Um, the U.S. Uh, temperatures is here, three hottest summers past two summers, three coldest winters, past two winters, all kinds of data here. Greenland uh, temperature changes um, at, the diff at various locations in Greenland. Um, Arctic summer, June, July, August, temperature anomalies throughout the, through the different years. Okay, so if we go here, you know, 2019, huge warming here, 2018, 2017, 2016 was the strong El Nino year, um, and you can trace it back. Um, and this is in the Antarctic, so, you know, the warming in the Antarctic, not as, not as um, strong, of course, as the Arctic, but there's some years where, it's, where it's, uh, there's quite a bit of warming, um, but the, there's more spatial... Uh, variance and distribution here. You can see the warming here, 2018, 2019, in the center of Antarctica. Okay, so uh, you know there's 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 lots more data. I obviously can't cover everything here, um, but uh, you know this is all. You know, access it yourself. Just go here and then go to the links here and find out whatever you specifically want to have a look at. Okay, so I'm just touching on things to give you an idea as to what's there. So we have solar irradiance. So, um, so you can see this is the in watts per square meter and you can see the fluctuation here uh, through the solar cycle. This is, uh, this correlates, this is, so the irradiance correlates very strongly, of course, to the sunspot numbers. If you just count the numbers of sunspots, then they follow this type of pattern, which, which uh, correlates here with the uh, solar irradiance. But this is only about a 0.1% change or so. Um, and this is what we have for 2019 going into 2020, the variation. Okay, so, and this is the uh, long term over longer time from 1600 to present, the annual mean sunspot number. So you can see the, 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 the cycles up and down, the 11 year cycles. This was very low solar sunspot activity, very low solar activity, the Maunder minimum, a, co a cool period for the earth. Um, monthly sunspot number, 1750 to, to uh, 2000 here. Okay, so, the, uh, you know, the effect on climate is there, but it's a lot smaller. It's, it, if you take the variation here, so it's from the, the, the um, trough to the peak, take this number here, divide it by the average, that gives you the percentage change in um, irradiation, and it's extremely small compared to the forcings from greenhouse gases. Um, this is the atmospheric greenhouse gas abundances. Uh, so CO2, the annual increase of CO2 at Mauna Loa in Hawaii. And this is a change in parts per million per year um, in the atmosphere. So, you know, you can see the trend here going up. This was, you know, in the 1960s, it was about one. Uh, you know, in the early 2000s, it was about two, and we're approaching three part per million increase per year. We're somewhere about two and a half on average. There is fluctuation. It goes well over three in some years. Okay. Um, and this is the growth rate in parts per million per year. From, so this is January through uh, December, and I'll continue in another video. Thanks for listening.